my dad was like, Kendall, like this is something like, if you want to go into engineering, you need to be a part of this organization. Nesby itself hasn't changed, but I've changed moving through it. I couldn't have survived had there not been a Nesby. It started before I came to Purdue. So this was uh, right after, or on the helm of the civil rights movement, uh, the death of Martin Luther King. Um, th there was just a lot going on in society for those that are coming to Purdue from pre pretty much a predominantly black neighborhood. Uh, it, it, was, it was a little bit scary. Fred Cooper was a no-nonsense type of guy, very business-oriented, and Ed Barnett was an engineering student. I believe he was an industrial engineer. And they saw the issues that were going around on campus. So Fred and Ed uh, saw the great value in forming an organization where they could, you know, at least those that were in the program could keep their course files and make those available to freshmen coming in, or there could be mentoring, each one teach one, you name it. You know, we can help each other. I believe their initial efforts were, were turned down. Uh, now Dr. Arthur Bond was then a, a PhD student in EE. He became an advisor, a mentor, an advocate for those young men and was very persistent in helping them make the case for a student organization. And I can't say enough about Art Bond and the work that he did in laying a foundation for what became uh, the, the Black Society of Engineers and then later the National Society of Black Engineers. So Ed and Fred were active in going back to their uh, Chicago and recruiting and some of the students they recruited were students that became known as the Chicago Six. And so Nesby very dearly holds uh, that conversation around these six brothers from Chicago, you know, big afros, hair bouncing when they walk, having a slide rule in the pocket because we didn't have calculators. <laughs> and there was a Ed Barnett, a Fred Cooper, and other brothers and sisters that, you know, immediately formed a, a circle around them and was there to help them as much as they could. That's probably the, the, the best support system you can have, is sort of creating another community, almost like the one you had back home. When you do your interview, some people shared with me uh, during a preview weekend how Nesby um, brought them together as a family. Um, and it was like a home away from home on Purdue's campus. And that was some of the things I was looking for going into college is just like a second home. I have a community that I have been a part of since probably 2007. And that community has been the exact same one that I joined back in 2007 and that I'm still a part of today. Um, and a lot of the classmates and friends that I met as a part of Nesby, I'm still in contact with today. It is like very necessary to have these types of organizations to help people go throughout their collegiate career and to just lend a helping hand. As I grew and changed, Nesby was still able to suit my needs at whatever point in my career I was at. The Nesby's mission is, everybody knows it by heart, to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers that excel academically, succeed professionally, and this is the most important thing, and positively impact the community. And uh, I believe in that mission. I believe it's as relevant today as it was back in the 70s.